Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm Lauren, this here is my husband Jonathan, and we are the directors of Elevate Guatemala. We're located here in a suburb of Antigua, Guatemala, known as Santiago Zamora. And today, as the craft, we are going to be making traditional Guatemalan kites. The reason why we picked to do um, uh, kites is because in Guatemala, in November, people celebrate uh, Dia de los Santos. Which is All Saints Day here. And uh, it's a reason or it's a way how uh, people communicate with their, with their saints or people that have already passed away. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So let's have fun. As Jonathan mentioned, here kites are used to celebrate All Saints Day. Families go to cemeteries to visit their grave sites of their loved ones who have passed on. Uh, they may bring lunch or flowers and just celebrate during the day. And then the other big part of that day is the kites. Uh, in several areas of Guatemala, you can find huge kite festivals where people take months to build huge, huge kites that then are flown the day of November 1st. Um, to see who can fly the longest, who can fly the farthest, and of course, which one's the most beautiful. To get started, we're first going to um, go over what each kit includes. All of you have re received a kit along with this instruction sheet. Um, and so we are gonna be explaining the steps step-by-step step for you guys according to the exact sheet that you guys have. So the materials that were already included would be the kite frame, just this. Um, one white kite sail with just tissue paper. For us, we're gonna use a pink one today. Um, a packet of extra tissue paper for making designs. Two folded pieces of tissue paper for fringe. You'll see they're um, folded like accordion. Do not unfold those, please. Um, and then we also have um, a, the string, which will be used as the kite line. You guys have a little bit different version, but um, any, any sewing string that is wound up will work. And then things that you'll need to find around your house will be scissors, uh, white glue, uh, and then a little glue cup or a little glue, we use um, an old lid from a bottle um, to pour the glue into. Uh, and then cotton swabs or, or a Q-tip can work as well. That'll be to help um, rub the glue onto the tissue paper since it's very fragile. Um, and then a toothpick or paper clip or a um, sewing needle also could work as well. That'll be to make very small little holes for the um, string to go through. All right, let's get started. All right, to begin, the first step is gonna be attaching the sail. So you will need to get out your white um, sail paper. Uh, again, ours is pink. And then you will need the frame that is made out of wooden sticks. You will place it onto the piece of tissue paper and then with your glue and the toothpick or cotton swab, you are going to lightly start putting glue along these edges and then folding them over on top of the string. So the string will then end up within the fold. And you guys, I believe, already have your corners cut. We didn't have ours, so Jonathan's gonna cut the corners real quick, and then he will begin folding um, each one over the string. He'll continue gluing each um, piece around. Jonathan's now on the last one. As you can see, he's using a Q-tip. If you find it easier using a cotton ball or your finger, you're welcome to do that as well. Just make sure you don't get too much glue because the paper will get too wet and start to rip. And then it will look like this when you're done with this step. Okay. Seguimos, yeah? Okay. Now we're gonna move on to designing the sail. This is the decorating part um, to make your pretty little designs. Um, you can cut or tear tissue paper and you can do it in whatever kind of design you want. If you want to do simple hearts, if you want to make it um, to look like Mike Wazowski or some sort of character, you can do whatever you'd like. The most um, popular and traditional way is to make things that look basically like how we make snowflakes in the States during Christmas. You can fold up your tissue papers um, in little designs and just start cutting. 
Um, as you can see, this one here has um, some glued on already. Any design, any pattern, any color, um, you can choose from the tissue papers that you have available. Um, and so we already have a few cut and I'm gonna cut one more while Jonathan starts to glue on the other ones. You can glue them however you'd like, um, overlapping. Um, and again, just make sure when you're gluing you don't get too much glue or things will end up ripping um, just because the, the paper is so fragile once it gets wet. So Jonathan will then um, either use his finger or a cotton ball or a Q-tip um, to start gluing those on very, very carefully. Meanwhile, I'm gonna fold over here another little snowflake type shape and just cut one more in the color red. You, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Any angle, any cut will always end up looking really cool. So definitely creative liberty here. Um, this is kind of what makes them super unique as well. And you want to make sure to have fun while, while you're doing this because it's uh, it's really fun and, and it's really nice to see when they are already in the air and just like, hey, I did that, so that will be nice. According to the Mayan legends, um, the more colorful you make your kite, the more um, likely it will be to reach heaven or reach your loved ones with a message, um, showing them that you are thinking about them and loving them on that day. And um, so here is um, what ours is turning out like so far. So just if you um, want to keep gluing, go ahead. You can have as many colors, as many as you want. Again, just remember not to put too much glue. Now we're going to move on to what here says brittling the kite, which would be threading the kite. Um, you will need the string and then a toothpick or a needle or paper clip for this step. So using whichever of those three you choose, you are going to carefully make a small hole with it um, as close as possible to the center, through the back, into the front. At this part, you'll want to decide which part of your kite is going to be the very top and which part is going to be the bottom. The so Jonathan here has made his hole. And then you're going to take the thread and string it through that hole from the back to the front. Once you have the string um, from the back to the front, you are then gonna take the piece that you have and wrap it around some of the sticks to kind of tie it in and make the knot. So Jonathan, no particular order, he's just gonna weave it around until it is secured into that place. And you're going to have it like this. Now that you have the string coming out of the front, you're going to measure roughly about twice the width that you have here with, um, to cut the string. Obviously, it can always be made shorter, but it cannot be made longer. So maybe give yourself a little extra if you are worried. Then moving on, we're going to cut another piece of string, roughly 20, 21 inches. Again, you can eyeball it, it doesn't need to be exact. Um, and that is going to be used to make a, a triangle of string that will be used to connect um, so that we can fly it. So you will find um, the top part, whatever you want to be the top of your kite, um, and in that little triangle, you are going to make two holes right at the corner, um, right next to where the stick is. So Jonathan has his string on a needle right now to make it easier and he's just threading that through and pulling the string through. So he's actually going, you're going around the stick, correct? Mm -hmm. So he went up and down and around the stick so that it is secured around the stick. And then you make a knot over here. Make a knot around it. Double. Which again, this part's probably easier with the needle than um, the toothpick or paper clip. So 
Um, you might want to use a needle on this one. And we're going to cut the extra string over here. And now... It's going to re-thread his needle, right? Yeah, with the with the string that you say the the length that say right here. Oh yeah, you never cut your string. No. Okay. It's, it's <laughs> he never cut it's it. It's so. in here all the time. Cutting his string now, again, roughly the 20, 21 inches. Doesn't have to be exact. And he's gonna re-thread that needle and do the exact same step going around the stick of the other part of the top triangle. Alright, again he's gonna go down and up back through to come around the stick and tie a knot once he's gotten up around that stick. But for this process, we need to make sure that this reach the middle, like this. So you're, you're making a triangle of string, and so what, like he said, it'll need to reach at least to the middle point of um, your kite. So before you make that knot on the corner, make sure you measure that it is in fact reaching to the center point. And once you have that already, like it doesn't have the exact either, but like once you have that, you just make the knot and make sure to be tight. And you have something like this that goes to the middle. We're now going to start the cutting and gluing of the fringe. If you're looking on the sheet where we're at, we are at step number 12. Um, and so what we have for this step are these pre-folded in accordion fold um, tissue papers. Not sure what color you guys have, it may be mixed like ours is. Um, and so what we're going to do is cut those. Um, do not unfold these, they need to be folded um, how they are in this accordion fold and you'll just need to make sure um, that the one side has one extra piece hanging up because this is the part that will be glued onto the kite. So when we cut, we're not going to go all the way uh, straight. We're just going to stop right here where the extra part starts. Yeah, so you can space your cuts out at whatever amount you'd like. Best is usually between one and two inches. Um, but again, this is eyeballed and it can be however you'd like. Like Jonathan said, you just need to make sure you cut firmly through these layers, but you will not cut all the way up. This part needs to stay intact so that it can be glued and doesn't rip. And so, so what I'm gonna do, it's like, uh, kind of like just measuring with my eye, and I'm gonna try to make five or six cuts. So, step one, let's cut it. All right, and he's gonna do the one other side as well, and we're gonna get these unfolded. Like I said, we made ours multi-color, so you'll see they switch. Not sure exactly what your kit included, but, um, and they can be any length. If you don't like them so long, you can cut them a little shorter. Um, it's totally up to whatever you would like them to look like. So here's this unfolding, you can see, oh. <laughs> we'll just glue those back on and we glue it onto the kite. Um, we got one cut a little too far, but you'll see they will all fall like this. Um, and then um, to explain where we are gonna glue these, um, there's a little diagram over on your instruction sheet that shows um, where you made that triangle string, the very top part of your kite, that's A. Um, below the bottom part is labeled as D, and then these two are E and C. So we are going to glue the two sets of um, fringe on the E and the C sides. So along here and along here. Um, and to make it look um, best, are you going to glue it on the front or on the back today? Uh, it has to be here. Mm -hmm. You're going to glue it on the front? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's going to then use the toothpick or the cotton ball again to add glue um, along the edges E and C. 
and he will glue on his um, his fringe. Again, these are very fragile. Obviously, I already ripped this one. So just be very careful when you're handling them and when you're gluing them. You get glue on this side. Huh? So I'm still gonna use this one even though I ripped it a little bit. And if you rather glue yours on the back side, you're, you're welcome to do that as well. We've glued ours here on the front, and you can see, again, this is A, D, and then these parts are the C and E. So you're gonna make sure that you don't have tails hanging from the middle of the bottom. Uh, now we're ready for the attaching of the flying line. So we're going to finish up with the strings that we already have connected. You're gonna take the middle, um, the string coming out of the very center of your kite and go under and through the triangle string. In ours, I don't know if you can see well, our center string is yellow and our triangle's red, just so you can see the difference. And then you're going to do um, a half knot. So you're not going to do the crisscross twice, just do it once so that it's loose. And this will make it adjustable um, as we attach the, the packet of string that will then allow you to fly your kite. So he just looped that through one time, and um, that part will now be ready for flying. You, you want to make sure that the knot is in a distance that it can reach this side, and also this side. And so, if no, uh, because it's not a full knot, it's still going to move. But this is how it will Yeah, you up. can adjust it. As long as you don't try a full knot, you'll be able to adjust it. Um, what's not included is to fly your kite. To finish the string, you're going to then take the, the tail that you have left from the center of the kite and you will attach the little um, packet of string that you have, the winder. Um, like I said, you can also use a cone or you can use um, the kind like we have that's for a sewing machine. And you will just double tie um, a knot from the end of the center string onto the winder of string that you have. And that's it. And you're ready. So again, here is what you should have and you are ready to go out and fly. Have fun. Thanks for joining us today making the kite. We hope that you have a good time flying that with your family and your kids. Um, so again, we're Lauren and Jonathan with Elevate Guatemala and we're glad to have you here. Thank you.